This is the Michael Parsons film session, linebacker number 11 from Penn State. I did this film session a uh, about a while ago, uh, but it's up on the Patreon. So I put all film there early and I put the long form of it. So there's an hour long film session on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. Uh, go over there and check that out if you get a chance there. Uh, he's number 11. You can't miss him because he's just big as hell, the biggest one out there almost. And uh, that's part of what makes him interesting, right? The fact that he's big as hell and the fact that he can move the way that he does for somebody that is big as hell uh we're gonna wait for the combine measurements to come out so when the combine nerds get that information they'll come back and put it in the chat box as always fun for them to do every year uh he's a guy that can make tackles on every part of the field whether it be within the trenches uh you know if you uh throw bubble screens he'll 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 get to the numbers quick uh outside zone inside zone he's good with all that screens uh and and he can put his hands in a dirty pass rush, right? I'm 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 gonna show you uh, plays of all this and just kind of break it down. And uh, of course, stay tuned for after all that because then we're gonna talk about some negatives. Then after after that, we're just gonna have a discussion about Michael Parsons. That's kind of how these film stages go. All right, so uh, get your snacks, man. Drink your water. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this play. I think this is a good play that'll summarize Parsons really well. Like I said, he's number 11. He's gonna be 11 for the duration of the film session. Like he's he's big as hell, right? Six, four, five, you know, 220, 30 some odd pounds, right? Like I said, we don't have the official measurements, but for this running back to have the edge on the defense at this point, with blockers and Parsons having the the speed, having a burst to to get there and make that tackle is super super impressive by him. Like I said, he's definitely going to be your sideline to sideline kind of cat. Uh, you know, from you know, like is he a Mike or like a Will linebacker? We'll talk about that a little bit, you know, later. But I think wherever you want to put him at, I think he's he's fast enough to uh, to hold down whatever linebacker spot you want to put him at. Here's another example. Like this play, for example, he's going to make the read, put his foot in the dirt. He's going to fly. He's going to force a fumble and save a touchdown. Just super impressive stuff when you talk about a dude that's this size, man. Great runner. And just one more play for y'all because it's Christmas. He's going to read this motion here. That motion is, of course, going to turn into a jet sweep. And what I like about this play in particular, my bad, what I like about this play in particular is not only does he have the athleticism to get outside, but he's going to beat blocks to get there, right? He actually beat two blocks to make this thing work. And that's another thing that we're going to talk about right now. Uh, his ability to deal with other big people and beating these blocks is going to be very important to where you line them up at. Take a look at this play here. Michael Parsons, uh, he's going to deal with this left uh, with this left guard right here, 79. He's going to come down, beat the block, slip it, then come up and make the tackle on J.K. Dobbins there, forcing the phone. But that's another thing that's uh, really important when you're watching uh, Michael Parsons is, is, is he's a turnover creator. Here he is again versus uh, Minnesota. And let me just say, look, I thought this was even more impressive because look at the size of these children, right? Like, like it's like Minnesota kid is always bigger than everybody else's, but he's able to live in that exchange, right? He's not just gonna, you know, somebody get hands on him, he's just gonna fall down, fold and comply. I think that's another good thing about him, man. Like, like you know, you know some linebackers will slip out of the way and end up, uh, you know, forcing themselves out of the play. Other linebackers end up on the ground. I'm not saying that Michael Parsons is just some big strong powerful dude but to have 78 this big child here to get hands on you but michael parsons actually gets the good extension there both of them kind of extend on each other uh but to be able to stay in this play get off that block and make the tackle was very impressive by this big ass minnesota kid here and just another example here, man, just showing comfort in the trenches, being able to just hit those gaps and uh, you know, you know, thump with those linemen, fullbacks, and other fat children. Then earlier we uh talked about him actually putting his hands in the dirt and being a real life pass rusher. Here he is right here, number eleven. Um, is he like a pass rusher that's worth considering? like as an edge guy because i mean there was a lot of guys last year like yo watch isaiah simmons goes down there and pass rushes like where would you rank him as an edge and you know that that was kind of nonsense to me like you know simmons was a safety linebacker dude that could rush from the edge spot they don't necessarily make him a pass rusher i think a lot of the the uh the uh same things about um 
about Parsons here, right? Parsons is an adequate guy that you could put at defensive end and just let him pass rush on pass rush downs. Is he going to be a guy that'll be full time edge for you? No. Um, but you know, for his size, and I think he has some quickness. He even has a uh, has an idea of what it's like to be a pass rusher in terms of hey, I'm going to attack the outside hand and dip. I think that's a pretty good nuance by him. Uh, you know, can he develop and turn into a solid pass rusher? Possibly. Uh, but as a full time option, I don't think so. But if you want to shake things up i think that's fair now this is where i would rather have michael parsons right instead of pass rushing from a three-point stance just rush him from the linebacker spot and he used to play like d end or something like that and that's cool but i think he's much more effective here where he has a couple of steps of a head start and then from a linebacker spot when he turns into a blitzer he gets to his destination then he flips and turns into a pass rush where he can give you a pass rush move when you go back and watch the film you can watch this on my patreon as well he has plenty situations where uh he's he's blitzing from the linebacker spot but then when he gets there he'll give you a swipe he'll give you a spin a dip or a rip or something like that and you're just not ready for that from a guard's perspective uh so i think he he offers a lot more uh nuance from the linebacker spot this play isn't about pass rushing it's more so about how he looks in zone coverage and i'm including it here because i thought it was pretty impressive he showed some nice little patience here read the quarterback's eyes he read the route really well came up and made a one-hand interception this play is also impressive however is not cartel view uh the uh memphis uh tigers lined up in this empty look and we see him just uh down on the boundary there uh he's actually going to make an interception on this play more so doing the same thing so i do like him in zone coverage a bit because he does seem to have some some uh some instincts in zone to where if he gets to read the quarterback uh and just kind of let a route develop in front of him if it's an easy route to diagnose like a you know like a little slant or something easy uh that he can make a bite on that play uh is he like a lockdown corner or something like that no like is he like miles jack to where i'm just gonna line him up in the slot no nah, i wouldn't do all that with him uh but i do think he is impressive if you ask him to do it in spots so this is one of the problems you're going to run into when you're dealing with Michael Parsons and uh, Micah Parsons. And uh, let's just kind of run this and show you. There's Michael Parsons here at uh, he's number 11. And, you know, if you misdirect him, he will get his life misdirected away. Um, it'll either be he'll end up running in the wrong direction or he'll end up, uh, you know, stuck looking at what's in front of him. And he'll just get blocked because he's not moving in a certain direction, you know, uh, to where if you watch another linebacker, we're not going to say names of guys because you're going to think that I'm saying that, that, you know, that their linebacker is better. But if you watch other linebackers, they have much better mental processing skills and they can keep their gap integrity, right? Uh, they can keep their gap integrity, diagnose the play, and then get to the play because they saw it so fast. You can even watch plays on Michael Parsons to where, um, you know, like you can look at me be like, man, he's really playing B gap really heavy. Like even once the ball is gone, he's just hanging around B gap. I think because his coaches understand that he has a problem diagnosing plays sometimes and to keep him from running all over the place, they'll be like, yo, Micah, just play B gap and don't go nowhere else. But in the National Football League, you're going to have to play B gap. Then you're going to have to play wherever the hell the ball ends up going. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so that can be a problem for him, you know, getting misdirected. And, you, you know, I, I don't I don't. <laughs> I don't like pointing out how linebackers get misdirected because you could be the the best athlete in the world, but if you're not getting to your landmark in a uh, in a timely fashion, you know that can that can be a problem for you. Like a lot of the 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 best linebackers share a similar trait in that they're first. You know, um, Roquan Smith, right? Uh, former Georgia, he's with the Bears now. He was small, but part of what made it okay for him being small is that he was always in the right place at the right time. He was always first. And if you're one step ahead of the offense, then that puts you in good position. Michael Parsons is a super good linebacker, but I wouldn't say by any means that he's going to be putting himself ahead of the offense. You see what I'm saying? So that's just that uh that's gonna be the end of the film session but if you want to hang around for the conversation that we're gonna have about michael parsons just some additional analysis then i encourage you to hang around and just listen you understand um so where would you play him right where would you play him i think there's a lot of places that you could play him but there are some other corresponding skills that'll keep him from being that guy um 
first of all this dude is like super talented man and i think he'll be really great as a sam linebacker and and yeah i, I don't want people to get this mistaken man because people have this ego with positioning but if you put a player where they are best and they end up being a pro bowler from that position then cool right there's nothing wrong with being a sam linebacker just because you you know uh, you know like a top 10 pick or something that don't mean you just throw him in mike or just you know you have to play mike linebacker because we drafted you here well sometimes you're a will you know and i think if michael parsons was a sam linebacker he could step down and do some of that pass rushing role for you uh he wouldn't have to diagnose as much because for the most part the 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 play would come to him uh he's big enough to beat up on these offensive linemen that he's going to run across he's big enough strong enough to deal with these pullers so in my mind i'm like why not be the sam linebacker right opposed to if you let your ego get involved and you put him at mike linebacker just for the sake of putting him at mike linebacker then he's gonna have to make calls he's He's gonna have to be field general guy he's gonna have to be smart for everybody else i don't think michael parsons would thrive in that i'm not saying he's a slow player or like a or not slow but like a not smart guy right i wouldn't call him a you know that kind of dude i just think that he's having problems with his with his mental processing and that's cool it could be because he's a young player but the problem is he's an opt-out guy so we don't know if he's gotten better at his mental processing so that just comes down to are you willing to gamble like this is a really big dice game when we when we uh talk about these opt-out guys if he did get better at his mental processing we don't have film to know if he got better at it or not so that's just something that we got to deal with uh to be a sam linebacker i think he has the athleticism but you probably need even more uh even more mental processing uh to be able to deal with that position because then you're you're uh going to be responsible for you know backside chase downs you're going to be responsible for cutbacks you're going to be responsible you know for the jet sweeps and kind of things that 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 go on with that because you're going to be running free so it's your job to be right about the diagnosis i don't think that's michael parsons uh if you just take a look at his skill set if it's me if i'm coaching and like i said i'm not a coach i'm just some goofy ass dude on youtube you ain't even got to listen to me uh even though i've been right about a lot of these things you ain't got to listen to me but if it's up to me he's not gonna start there right let me just get that straight he's not gonna start there because some team is 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 just gonna ego their way out of this thing you know he, he he's he's probably gonna start at mike linebacker and he's a great size for great athleticism great uh great genotype for it pardon me great phenotype for it right the physical fits mike linebacker the problem is from the shoulders up can he uphold that and then when you dump that playbook on him when you dump uh you know the 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 reads the keys you know can he be that general maybe one year he can be right i'm not gonna say what he can't do it's just that at that point my you know my breakdown and analysis won't won't matter five years from now three four years from now can he be a mike one day sure he'll probably be a serviceable a pretty good mic for you one day i want to say sir he, he, he could be a really good mic for you one day but from rookie year to where i think he can project to a pro bowl you know kind of guy not only do i think you get an advantage putting him as, as sam linebacker for him but to have a super athletic Sam linebacker that can kind of cover gives you the ability to not switch formations up so much. Like a lot of guys have Sam linebackers that are slow, so they take those guys off the field when they have to, you know, go into other packages and things like that. I think he's athletic enough to where you put him at Sam linebacker, you could just run three athletic ass linebackers out there. Plus, he can give you some thumping while he's there. You know, that's just my thoughts, man. Tell me what y'all think, man. Go in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Like I said, if you want to see the full-blown film session of it, the hour-long joint and it's actually the early version of it. I, I, I did this film session like two two months ago maybe like six weeks or something that's on patreon patreon.com slash vach lombardi go over there and check it out i really do appreciate it uh follow me on twitter v-o-c-h-l-o-m-b-a-r-d-i we do these every now and then on youtube i'm sure it's gonna ramp up uh once we get started with the uh with the draft process is december now so like january february march april we're really gonna going to be pushing these things out uh me and jeff cavanaugh do a draft show every uh every week it's looking like that's going to be so it's you know it's some heavy draft talk now we're going to sprinkle cowboys in there but once we get to the offseason we're going to be doing analysis for all 32 teams so be sure to tune into that y'all hold it down for the doski welcome to peace man till next time peep my outro salute